For the next couple of chapters, we're going to look specifically at climate change. So uh, chapter 12 begins with a discussion of sort of where we are on climate change. Um, and we know that climate change is largely due to carbon dioxide levels and other, um, other pollutants in the environment. Um, and so this uh, graph shows the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere over time. So you see that zigzag pattern, which comes from seasonal changes in, in, um, in emissions. But notice the overall trend is certainly that emissions or, or the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere is increasing um, and increasing pretty quickly over just a few decades. Um, so we can we can break that out. This uh, graph breaks that out into uh, the the sources, the fossil fuel consumption sources of those carbon emissions, um, which can help us uh, sort of determine maybe the best places to target to, if we want to limit those emissions. Um, and then this graph shows how those emissions are uh, distributed between developed or OECD countries and developing countries, the others. Uh, so notice uh, back in the 60s, the developed countries, the blue here, were the vast majority of carbon dioxide emissions. Um, and the gray, the gray area, the non-OECD countries were, were a really small uh, uh, portion of those emissions. Um, and as time goes by, that changes. So we see a couple of things. One, we see that the OECD countries are, are making an effort to curb their emissions. And so we see their emissions uh, sort of level off. Um, and at the same time, the non-OECD countries are developing. And so the more industrialized they become, the more, uh, the more they then will emit. So here's uh, another look at that, that same idea, but um, in a pie chart. And so you can see that uh, China is a vast majority of um, emissions. Uh, on a country by country basis. Um, and then the US is pretty large also um, it, as a slice of this pie. And the next, uh, the next chart is maybe an even more interesting way to look at this. So uh, the next chart shows per capita carbon dioxide emissions. So if you think about how many people, sir, China emits a lot, but China also has a bunch of people. Um, and so their emissions per capita per person are, are low, pretty low compared to other countries, um, where in the U.S., notice we are um, way above uh, anyone else in the picture um, as far as our per capita carbon dioxide emissions. So the main, uh, one of the main issues or uh, concerns with global climate change is um, temperature rise um, or temperature changes. So this uh, this graph shows how global annual temperatures have changed over time. So it's a little bit strange to wrap your head around what's going on here in the graph, but the zero line, so it tells you down here in the in the fine print at the bottom of this slide, the zero baseline represents the average temperature between 1961 and 1990. So if um, and then the blue line shows how we have changed relative to the average each year. So, um, so the point here is that until oh 1940 something, we were pretty consistently, other than a, a sort of random spike in in the 1870s, uh, we were pretty consistently at a temperature below average um, for that entire. Uh, below the average level um, for the 1961 to 1990. And then since then, starting in the 1950s, uh, for the next couple decades, we sort of bounced around right at that average. And since about 1980, um, we have been at a temperature that's higher than average and not just higher than average, but is increasingly higher than average um, over time. 
so you can see uh, temperature rising. Uh, at the same time that temperatures rise, we also have sea level rise. So we have um, uh, glaciers and 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 uh, ice in the ocean that is melting. Oceans are then rising, um, and so this uh, this graph shows how much sea levels have risen over time, um, starting at at a zero level of 1880, um, how much higher has uh, our sea levels um, over time than they were at that time? And certainly clear that that trend is trending up. Sea levels are rising. Now, of course, we've talked about in previous chapters that what happens in the future, what we can expect to happen, um, will depend on what we do policy-wise. Uh, the maybe unfortunate news is we've already done enough damage uh, that um, CO2 levels are, are high enough that we will see continued temperature rise. Even if we were to uh, enact super strict policy today, we would continue to see temperature rise uh, for the next several years um, before we really see any effects of today's policies. Uh, but we do have different scenarios, so shown here, different scenarios of what might happen uh, to, um, to temperatures um, depending on how we, how we sort of react now and different policies that we might make. And here, again, um, more sort of projections of what will happen, uh, the relationship between how, what we do today to level greenhouse gas emissions um, and eventual temperature change. So uh, what's going on here is notice each of these lines, each of the horizontal lines is associated with a level of CO2 emissions or CO2 equivalent emissions. So that little E there means CO2 equivalency. So if you, if Certainly other gases other than just CO2 are being emitted, um, but if we think about the equivalent amount of CO2, um, that's what this is measuring. Um, so depending on what level we sort of set things at and where we choose to target as what we're going to stabilize, uh, where we're going to cap our emissions, um, we would have different scenarios as far as uh, temperature change. Um, so the temperature is across the horizontal axis. The black line for each horizontal line is the 90% certainty. So the most likely temperature change, um, if, for example, we were at 400 parts per million, um, most likely with 90% certainty, we would see a temperature change between 1 and 3 degrees Celsius. Um, and then the line continues, the little dashed line continues with what is possible, but not necessarily as probable as what as the range that's shown with the black um, line. So what you see here is what we were showing in the last graph, that even if we curbed emissions today, we would still see temperature rise. So every one of these scenarios, um, regardless of how strict we get on, on greenhouse gas stabilization, um, every one of these scenarios shows temperature change. Um, but how much that temperature changes certainly depends on what we do uh, to try to curb or stabilize greenhouse gas emissions. Um, this is pretty tiny print. Uh, you can look at it in your book. It's table 12.1. Um, but it just it just goes through some of the impacts, the costs of climate change. Um, if we were to see a temperature rise of one degree Celsius all the way up to five degrees Celsius, what would be the impact on these different um, areas of our environment, of our uh, lives, really, of that type of, te of um, temperature change? So this is a pretty interesting table that sort of puts things into perspective of, of why we should care. So of course, if we're gonna if we're thinking about the problems with global global climate change, um, 
we have to put this into perspective of what will it cost then to try to mitigate that, right? And so sort of going back to that idea that we we looked at a few chapters ago with a cost-benefit analysis. Um, so certainly there are, as, as we saw in this table, there are costs, there are effects that are negative of climate change. Um, your book also discusses a few positive effects of climate change, um, like changes in the ability of certain regions to, to um, have agriculture uh, things like that. Um, if it warms up in an area that used to be too cold to grow a certain crop, now you can grow that. So there's there are a few positive effects. Um, the warmer it gets, the smaller those positive effects get. Um, but if we really want to know what's worth it, what should we do to try to stop climate change, um, we need some measure then of the the cost of climate change and um, and then also the cost of mitigating climate change so that we can we can look at the the cost benefit analysis of any policy. Um, so here is our three different models. So you can see it kind of varies depending on how you measure things. Um, and remember, it is really tough to measure the the monetary value of environmental damage sometime, sometimes. But um, these are three different models that show uh, the cost of environmental damage, the cost of rising global temperatures um, as a percentage of global GDP. And uh, of course, you see that each of them trends upward, uh, that the higher, the more we see temperatures rise, the higher the cost will be, the more, the greater the damages will be as a percentage of GDP. The last part of this book, it's, it's a really short section, but I think it's really important um, to think about is what are the, um, the different effects of climate change on different populations? Um, and the book makes the point that climate change is going to have a disproportionate effect on the poor people of the world, um, poor areas that are going to gonna maybe go underwater because of sea sea level rise um, or that'll get super hot uh, because they're are near the equator and, and that's where the where um, that uh, temperature rise is going to be really uh, felt. Um, and these areas often are poorer areas that they're going to experience major impacts of climate change and don't necessarily have the resources that a richer country might have to build the retaining walls or the dams or whatever it is they need in order to mitigate those effects. And so um, it really brings in uh, this the idea and the importance of thinking about um, environmental justice um, and how uh, how climate change affects different peoples, different parts of the world differently, and what is our responsibility uh, for correcting some of those, um, those inequalities. Um, so just something that's interesting. You'll read a tiny section about it, but it's interesting certainly to think about um, as you, as we think about these different uh, impacts of climate change and then impacts the next chapter. We'll talk about the policy uh, policy responses to climate change. Um, and we certainly need to need to include um, some thought toward inequality in um, how people are affected by the climate change and also by the policies that we enact to try to uh, to try to mitigate climate change.